and the shofars are silent. So all the time, the sound of God's warning, and it's kind of, it's a sign in itself of a nation that is being warned, but is not hearing the warning of God. Yeah, because the sound of the shofar, right? During the month of Elul and going into the month of Tishrei, which is begins with Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, into Yom Kippur, right? It's meant to function as a spiritual alarm clock, right? Yeah. It's meant to be a wake up call to arouse people out of their slumber, to arouse people out of their sleep, to say, hey, the great day of judgment, the great day is coming, prepare yourself, rouse yourself. And, yes. uh, you know, it was so, obviously God was, it was meant to send the message to wake yeah. up. You know, it's it's so funny because I, you know, I, <laughs> I know that you've written several books now. Uh, Harbinger 2 came out not that long ago. Man, it's such a huge accomplishment because I can tell you I, <laughs> I, I've i written a couple books. <laughs> Man, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done is writing books. I mean, it's like some people love writing books. For me, it's like having a baby. It's like it's it's labor, right? I mean, it feels good when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it is. It is exactly. It is. It is like labor. You are bringing forth, you know, from the Lord. And yeah. And I, I you know, like I, Jason, you know, when you knew me, I didn't write any books. I, I always do. I was supposed to, but I never did. And it was only when, you know, after I shared the message of the Harbinger or the revelation of the Harbinger, people said, you got to do this, got to do this. And I still didn't do anything for about two years. And then it was just the Lord saying, okay, it's time, you know, um, and, and when I first wrote The Harbinger, actually, people don't realize, I, I wrote it as complete, you know, nonfiction. My, everything I do is really nonfiction, but I, I share a number of things through, a, through narrative to make it easier to, to get the information. Um, so I originally wrote The Harbinger, you know, that way, and it was, it, was, it was tough. But And then as soon as I finished, it was like the Lord said, okay, now redo it, but do it with a narrative. You're going to have a prophet and this one and do the same thing, and it just, and it flow, it like wrote itself. So, you know, I don't know what the what the answer is, but it just literally flowed. It was the easiest thing I ever did. But the first time it was hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because, you know, we have a, a new book coming out, Mysteries of the Messiah, uh, March 23rd. And again, it's just, it's it was, it was a labor of love. But the amazing thing is that, again, I want to thank you because you help instill in me a love for the deeper mysteries that are in the scripture. I mean, I remember, you know, sitting at Beth Israel or I'm dating myself, getting the cassette tapes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> getting yep. the cassette tapes and, 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 and listening and just having that kind of road to Emmaus moment where you, you know, where you see how the old and the new wow. connect and how, how it's yeah. prophetically yeah. being fulfilled. And so you kind of, help instill that and birth that passion to kind of seek those things out. Oh, uh, so again, I just want to say, you know, oh, thank I'm, you. It's just been a oh, blessing. I'm, so, I'm totally blessed, Jason. I'm totally blessed to hear that. So yeah, so so in the past year, obviously America has undergone a lot of quaking, uh, a lot of shaking, probably like never before. You wrote the book, The Harbinger. It's very prophetic in nature. And can you just share a little bit about um, the significance of it and what it's saying uh, to us for this time and season. That yeah, we're living. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, the the Harbinger two. I mean, of course, it takes up yeah. where the Harbinger one left off. I I I always knew for for years that I had to write the, uh, a follow up, the follow up of the Harbinger, and I held off because I know I could never do it until the time was right, until the Lord said, um, and the time was right. So um, the Hold on, let me just. So, um, so therefore, you know, it, it, the Harbinger too is what has happened since I came out with the Harbinger. What have the have the signs continued? Have we continued on this ancient progression, this mystery, uh, for, which is the Harbinger, which we, we can get into. So, for those who don't know the Harbinger, um, is America heading toward judgment? Are we are we f are following the the ancient template of the last days of Israel? Has it continued? So, one part is. What has happened since the Harbinger? Another part is that you know there's there's another part where I when I wrote the Harbinger I did not put everything down. In fact, most of the stuff I didn't put down. There was so much that came, and I only put a little portion, which became the Harbinger. So there was stuff that I didn't reveal, but I knew it had it would be 
uh, at, a, at its right time. So another part is called the unrevealed, which are things that I, from 9-11 onward that I never revealed that are that is uh, affecting us now. And the last part is what is happening now? Um, is there so all the shaking and all that we've gone through? Is there something behind it? Is there is there a mystery? Is there is there um, a, an answer? Is there a reason? Is there a warning? Um, and there is, and where is it all leading, and what do we need to know to stand strong in the days ahead? So uh, that is kind of a, a nutshell of the re- of what is going to be revealed in the Harbinger too. Wow. Now, is there a secret, uh, a couple of secrets from the book that you can kind of reveal to us and give us some sure. insight that you feel is like really pertinent for this moment? Uh, oh, sure. And, and let me tell you, you know, um, Jason, I was, you know, I was praying in 2019 about what's the next book. And I had a few things. Okay. Give me this, 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 and you know, I'd like to do this, but I always pray, Lord, what, what do you want to do? And what, what's the next thing? And that's where I got, okay, it's time for the Harvard two. And I got a very strong sense. This is 2019 that 2020 was going to be a year of great shaking. And I, I, I shared a- about that at the congregation publicly um, before all these things happened. And I knew that it was going to be the the continuation of the harbinger of, of the mystery of this. And I had to get this out in that year. You know, so I started right. writing in January and then uh, by in March, all the shakings began, you know, and then it came out in September. So um, that's that's you know, that's that's the background there. But there is there is so much. Do you want me to? Start with just a little sample, a taste of things that I didn't reveal from the beginning, sure, and then I sure, can go please. to what's up. Okay, please, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. One of the things you know, for those who don't know, the 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 template of judgment and warning in the Bible is that years before the great shakings come upon the land and the and really or or the judgment or destruction, there is a there's a warning. Um, there's an initial strike on the land. It happened with, with the ancient nation of Judah, happened with Israel years before. Well, with America, it, it begins with 9-11. And 9-11 was a wake-up call. It was limited. It was contained. It was a, the strike of the enemy, the biblical template. And from that comes nine harbingers or nine warnings um, that, that basically that appeared in the last days of ancient Israel that have uh, now appeared in America, starting with 9-11. It's warning the nation, calling it back, because God is calling the nation back. So that's the that's the beginning of what is revealed in the Harbinger. But there's a lot that I didn't reveal uh, from 9-11. I think some things you would you would connect with. Um, certainly, one is that the the week that was leading into 9-11, there was a scripture verse appointed from from you know almost virtually ancient times that's read in all the synagogues. And of course, you know it, Jason, and that that this is called the Parshas. And um, and this is the appointed word that is appointed that that every Sabbath they open up the scriptures, we open and we read that appointed word. Well, what was the appointed word leading into 9-11? It was the word that speaks of the warning of what happens when a nation that has known God turns away from God, and and as it turns away from God, um, the the judgments begin on the land um, or the warnings. And one, it specifically says, an enemy will come from far away, a faraway land, will strike you at your gate, which actually the gate of America is New York. Um, it speaks about all sorts of things that are going to happen, and then and then it says he will come like an eagle swooping down, an eagle swooping down, which is actually how 9-11 literally, I mean, the enemy, it's a sign of judgment in the Bible. The enemy comes in some way like an eagle swooping down. Well, 9-11, it was literally the plane swooping down. The first plane that began 9-11, actually when it came uh, into New York, it had an image on the back, which is an image of an eagle swooping down. And so it all begins, and there's much more, we don't get it, but much more from that, that that this was the very scripture chanted all around the world, all around America, all around New York, and then 9-11 happened. Um, and so it's the beginning of the, the warnings of a nation. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention one, maybe one if, other... If I could interrupt yeah. you for a second. Please, I, just, I, think please. I think there's an important point there, which is that Yeshua, Jesus would weekly read from the Torah, right? And there is this idea of living with the times and the seasons. And so for those that are for those of you who are watching that might not be familiar with this, like oftentimes what goes on in the weekly Torah reading uh, that's been appointed from ancient times often gives key insights into the times and the seasons 
which is really important to understand. And as I'm sure you're sure, this event happened right around the time of judgment on the Jewish calendar, which is the fall biblical holidays. Right? Yeah. Or, sorry, oh, oh, yeah, 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 Jason. And, and something linked to that is, you know, in ancient times when an enemy was coming and coming to attack a city, the sound that you would hear, hopefully, would be the sound of the watchman, was the sound of the shofar blowing. Okay. Well, 9 11, when on the morning of 9 11, all around the northeast of America, the sound of the shofar begins to be heard in the morning, and actually, because of an because of an ancient ordinance of certain things that have to be done, where we're in that period. First of all, it's the month of Elul where where that is blown, but also on that day, uh, it's a special time where scriptures concerning judgment and mercy, crying out for mercy, uh, are read. And so it all happened the morning of 9-11. And the thing is that the appointed times for when the shofar, the war, this warning is blown, um, is it starts with uh, the dawn and also a sunrise, depending on how, on how you view it. So the thing, so what happened was it begins, the shofars began sounding in Maine at a certain time. And that's exactly when 9-11, the terrorists began in Maine, the first week, as they're passing through the airport is the shofars begin sounding. Then they start sounding in Boston. Well, in Boston, then there comes the, the the next part of 9-11, the enemy comes to Boston. Then the sound, the ancient sound of warning begins in New York City. And then and it all and then the planes start coming to New York City. And then it, it starts sounding in Washington. And the planes go to Washington. And so all of these things, I mean amazing. And not only that, the the it, it, the, the shofars begin when this is all beginning and they they stop. They 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 go for a, the, the the period is is 4 hours. Basically, they end at 10:30. Well, 9/11 last event is the North Tower comes down at at, at just about 1029 and the shofars are silent so all the time the sound of god's warning and it's kind of it's a sign in itself of a nation that is being warned but is not hearing the warning of god yeah because the sound of the shofar right during the month of elul and going into the month of tishrei which is begins with Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, into Yom Kippur, right? It's meant to function as a spiritual alarm clock, right? Yeah. It's meant to be a wake up call to arouse people out of their slumber, to arouse people out of their sleep, to say, hey, the great day of judgment, the great day is coming, prepare yourself, rouse yourself. And, yes. uh, you know, it was so obviously God was, it was meant to send a message to wake yeah. up. Right. Yeah. Yes, and 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 absolutely, Jason. And it it converges because there's certain days on on the calendar at the end of a little where these certain scriptures about crying out for mercy and speaks about judgment on a nation. That's what was read that morning too, because it, it converges at the end. Absolutely, and I'll I'll just share one more from these early things that I never revealed. You know, and and then we can get to what's happened since since the harbinger and what's happening now. Um, one other thing, which is kind of like another version of this kind of appointed word in a very interesting kind of crazy way. The, the key scripture for the harbinger, uh, for those who know it, uh, in the first book is the bricks have fallen. It's Isaiah 9, 10. I'll just say, and it's about what's happened when that first attack comes and the nation, instead of coming back to God, gets hardens itself and says, we're going to come back stronger. Well, this is Isaiah 9, 10. And it's, it's, a, it's in view of the attack of the enemy on the land, the beginning of judgment. Well, the, well, there is a Bible, and I know you know it, Jason, but and many people know it. It's called the One Year Bible, and and there are different versions. But if it's called the One Year Bible, uh, there's different versions of it. But if it has that title, you know, there's a point. There's an appointed word for every day. There's pointed scriptures for every day, kind of like kind of like the Parshas, but for every day. And so, so the thing is that if you open up the one, if it's called the One Year Bible, and you open it up to that scripture, the harbinger, Isaiah 9, 10, about the judgment beginning, the attack on the on the land. You look on the top of the page, you'll see a date. The date is September 11th, the wow. September 11th, the actual. And so, so Jason, on wow. 9-11, all over America, and I didn't know this when I wrote the harbinger, I had no idea. All over America, believers were opening up the Bible about the attack on the land. And, 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 and literally, I mean, details like a sycamore tree being struck down, which happened at Ground Zero, before it happened and while it happened. And in fact, the other thing, Jason, is that this scripture, 
the, the one year Bible came out in the late 1980s. So it was all there for, for like 16 years every year on, on, on non 11. Believers are opening up their, their Bibles to the scripture about the attack on the land, the beginning of judgment. I mean, who could put that together? Well, it's, it's, it's just, it's just incredible. I mean, yeah. that's why like understanding the times and the seasons is so significant. I mean, like when we even, what we see even going on in modern times, right? It's this biblical pattern that every major event in the life of Jesus happened on a biblical holiday, right? So it should be no, right? He dies on Passover. He rises from the dead and Yom Hippur, first fruits, he pours out the Ruach, the Holy Spirit on, on uh, Shavuot. So it should be no surprise that even in modern times, these events are still coinciding with key times, dates, holidays on the Jewish calendar. Because yeah. they're still important. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. He's the God of all and the God of time and space and the God who weaves all these and weaves our lives together. I mean, look at our lives and you look back and you say, wow, Lord, you did this and this and this. Well, he is the same God who's on the throne. And absolutely. 